Hi, Ann Cornick from Paint and Porcelain. I'm here to teach beginners how to get started in China painting and to encourage those of you who have been painting for a while to paint along with us. And uh, today we're going to be working on daffodils and I'm really excited to be working on daffodils because it's one of my favorite flowers to paint actually. And I know a lot of people don't paint daffodils for some reason. So this is what we're going for. It's one head on and one side of a daffodil. And I tried to make them large because I think it's easier for a beginner um, to start with that. And then um, they can go from there and make them smaller and make tons of them or whatever they want. Colors. I am using the colors I like. And I apologize ahead of time because it's not going to look like your typical daffodil. <laughs> um, I tried a typical daffodil and I painted it and it looked bleh. And I wasn't real pleased. Now, the ones I showed you that I did previously, I used like a green or a gray for the shading. We're gonna use a whole bunch of colors now. Okay, so I'm gonna be using an orange. Whatever orange you have that stays on and doesn't fire out would be good. The mixing yellow, you should have used that in order to tint your plate very lightly. But if you tinted it heavy, don't worry about it because with daffodils, they're very forgiving. I'm using Ashes of Roses. If you have a gray gray, I'm using shading blue, um, a cool shadow. If you don't have cool shadow, you can use baby blue. It'll work just as well. Then I have chartreuse and warm brown green. And those are some very basic colors. The reason I had you tint the plate is because it's going to teach you shading. So for newcomers to China painting, this time when we put the colors on, we're only putting the shading on. You already have a yellow there to work with. So it should help you understand what the shading does. Now on my plate that I'm doing in, I already traced, I, I tinted it, fired it, then I traced my design on, and I put an X at the one o'clock position on my plate because that's where my light's coming from in this case. So you might want to do that to remind you that the light is coming across the plate this way. That means that everything in the like seven and eight o'clock position, that side of the flower and things, the lower side on, on that side will be where you put your shadows. So that may help, that may not, but um, I'm going to tilt you down. We're going to get started. I'm going to show you how I did um, how I did the tinting really briefly. So that's this plate, but we're gonna start with this one. This is one my dad actually painted. You can tell he put the gold on and he was shaky. And you can see how the gold goes on unevenly if you use your fingers. So you really have to watch that. And here's, here's that purple that you can get on the plate. He got a little bit of that too because it went very thin. Um, I can clean this plate up. It's going to take a while. There's purple up in here too, but I found it and I thought this is a great one to show you at least how to tint. You're going to take, clean your brush out, make sure it's nice and clean, and you're going to pick the color that you want to tint it. Now, tinting is light. It is not dark. So if you're tinting this plate, you're going to want to make sure that your colors are going on lightly. I know that mixing yellow can be kind of a strong color from time to time. So what you want to do is, is tint it lightly. You're going to start and go back and forth like this, cross hatch. I, I know the color is hardly, barely there. Can you see it? I think, yeah, I guess you can see it. You can at least see where I'm putting it. You can do this in ivory. You can do it with blue. You can do it with pink. You're going to use the biggest brush you have in order to do this because that's what's going to make it quick for you. Otherwise, you'll be here all day. So the largest brush you have, this is a three quarter inch that I'm using now. And I just go back and forth and add the color. And then if it's not, and I gotta make that color darker, you guys can't really see it here. Let me get some serious blue here, okay? There you go. And then after you've done everything all the way out to the edges, if it's not, and you, and you hold the brush back at the very end and do it very lightly, you'll get it very smooth. And you want it dry, you don't want it oily. And then you're gonna take your eraser, if you have it, or a silk, and just lightly pat it to even it out, if you have any, any strokes or anything in there. The idea is just to give yourself a little base coat to work from. 
okay? So that's how you tint a plate. You would fire this, and then once this is fired, and you go all the way around, obviously. I'm just giving you a sample. And once this plate is fired, then you, you put the design on. And you're gonna put your design on using Sorrel Wrap, which is the red. This is the Sorrel Wrap right here, S-A-R-A-L. That's what I use, it comes on a roll. You're gonna use that. You're gonna put that down with the brightest side down on the plate, like this. Tape it down and trace it. It will come out red, not as dark as this. I used a Sharpie, this is my Sharpie. And I use this to trace it. Now, if you don't need to, don't use the Sharpie because sometimes, I don't know why, it just helps the paint build up a little around the Sharpie. So if you can get away with not using the Sharpie, that would be terrific. So we're gonna get started. And we're gonna be painting the daffodil. And I'm gonna start with the center of the daffodil. I'm not using my big brush, I just cleaned it. I'm gonna use my number 10 brush. This is a nice flat brush. And it's, it's one that's really easy to um, paint with. It's very nice and smooth. That's one of the things I like about it. I'm starting with the center of my daffodil. And I'm just going to put in the orange. I've got it side loaded on my brush. Just this side is dark, this side is light. And I'm just coming around and putting in that little center like that. And then I'm going to turn it and I'm going to pull it up a little. And that's all I'm doing on, on this particular part. And there it's up a little too far, so I'll take that out. That's the orange. Okay, then I'm going to go into my blue that I told you about, and we're going to start adding a lot of the, um, the shadow. Let's start with this part here. This is probably, um, let me get up here. This is probably the best uh, example I can give you of shadow. This is cool shadow, and I'm just putting it down that side. Then I'm coming around and I'm going to put a little up in here. Oh, a little too much up in there. No, here. A little up in there. Pull it down. And I'm going to put a little bit on this side, right there. I don't want it to go quite that much into the middle, so let me pull some back here. Oops. All right, I'm just going to put this up here so I remember where I need to be. All righty, and then I'm going to oh, I'm going to feather this down. There we go, just feathering that down. Then I'm going to go in and get a little bit of the gray, which is ashes of roses. And now the sun's up here, coming down this way. I'm going to put a little bit of the gray over here, a little bit of the gray here, maybe a little on this side. I'm going to pull it out gently. And then on this side, there'll be a little bit of color underneath. So I'm just going to, they turn down a little bit, so I'm just going to put a little bit of gray in there. That'll help. Now I'm going to move up to this flower because I think it's a little bit easier to work on that flower. And um, I'm going to start adding a little yellow to my brush just so I have it. And um, let's see here. I'm going to put a little orange on the side, and I'm just bringing the orange down here as my shadow and down there. Just to give it a little bit of oomph. And on this one, there's a little fold right here. Do you see that little fold? Looks like right there. There is one. So I'm going to flip this around and I'm going to take and put a little bit of the blue up here. And then I'm going to flip it back and I'm going to pull a little bit of the blue down, just a tad. 
Now some of this blue will fire out a little bit. And then on this side down here, I'm going to take a little blue and gray and maybe put a little color in there. Okay. You see what I've done there? Now on the second fire, I'm going to put a wash of yellow over all of this. And you will not believe the change. Okay. Now I'm going to do the leaves that are around it. And take a little bit of the blue and I'm just going to come down here you, you would have some shadow at the base here and you would have shadow that goes this way too right here and I think I'm just going to pull this I'm going to pull this this up here in a little bit. It's a little bit strong. Here we go. There we go. I think that's a little better. Oops. Need some oil on my brush. Okay. And then you're going to have, and I'll use a little bit of orange for something different right here. And I'm going to put a little bit here. Maybe a little gray. And at the base. That's all you're doing. You're just doing the shadows this time. Go back in. I'm just going to feather the center section out a little more. Add a little more orange. There we go. I think that's a little nicer there. I might want a little deeper right in here. Okay. Now on these petals, it's pretty much the same as it was up on the top. Let me get a little more depth in there. There we go, oops. Okay. You're gonna use your, you can either use blue or you can use gray. And you're gonna do that like this, so you get that little line in the middle there. You're putting that little crease that's on that, in the middle right, right there. See how I did that? And the same thing with this one. You're gonna put, let me get the gray a little darker. You're gonna put the gray on, and then you're gonna come down the middle and pull it down, and that will give you that little crease there in the middle. going to move this up a little and we're going to take gray with a little bit of blue now. I'm using blue now and I'm just going to, because I like to change up the colors periodically. i put a little blue on this side. Okay. Now on this leaf, I'm going to put some shadow right at the edge using the blue a little bit right here. Because the light's coming this way. It's hitting there, there, there there let me pull this up a little yeah there it's hitting there this guy's in the background so he's automatically that this one he's automatically going to be darker this has a turnover the inside of the turnover here is going to be dark and then we'll just put a little bit of darkness on the bottom here a little here and a little in here this is just shadows we're doing. Now, for the center part of this guy, here, I like to do the blue. That's just me. This is cool shadow, you can do baby. You keep it really light though, because you're gonna be putting a yellow over it. Once it's fired, they won't mix. They won't look horrible. That's why I say try to get your, your color on very lightly now. And then here I'm gonna put a gray I think the gray is a little darker than the blue, so if you have a darker section here where you want to put a little more shadow, you can do it there. And then I'm going to take a little bit of blue and put it on the end here. Okay. And you can soften this by just feathering over it. 
I would always feather back to where the shadow originates. So here it originates at the base. So I feather towards the base. Here it will originate towards the base. And that's how you go about smoothing that all out so that then it'll look like shadows on the next fire. Okay, now the leaves you're gonna do like normal leaves. Leaves, I'm gonna use chartreuse and I'm gonna use warm brown green. I'm gonna use um, chartreuse predominantly where the leaf is light. So like this part up here, oh, let me pull it down so you can see it. This part up here um, will be light. So I'm just doing that entirely in chartreuse because it's flipped over right now. The end of this will be light. You put in your lights first. Um, the end of this would be a little light right in there. Remember, light's coming from up here. This part of this will be light. It's twisted. This part here will be dark. So it's twisting on itself. These leaves do that a lot. So I think you'll find when you're painting daffodil leaves, they do that a lot. Can you see what I've done so far? Your stem, you can put the light all the way down and then you can go back and put the dark up at the top. Let me move this up a little there. Here, I'm gonna put light on the top because the light's coming this way. So think of how it's gonna hit it. It's gonna hit it mostly up in there, right? And if you get a little over the lines, you just take and push it back with the top of your brush after you've cleaned it off. Okay, and this one, this is the back of the leaf. That's the front of the leaf. So I'm going to make this part oh, too oily. Got it patted off. You, you want to stay dry when you paint. There you go. Okay, so I put the lights on where I think the lights will be. Now we're going to go back and put the dark on here. Now, I don't know if I've seen anybody do daffodils this way, so we'll see how it works. We're going to put the dark on here. So if you've got the plate tinted and you're not working under a heavy light like I am, you would see that this is all yellow in the background. And you would also be able to see very easily, yep, always shade down, pull down towards the, the base because that's the shade there. And hang on, I gotta push this color out of here. I don't want you green down there. Okay. Um, and you would see that this is yellow here too. So you'll know where your highlights are gonna be on your um, flower as well because you've already left them and it's already yellow for you. My yellow on this is not real dark, um, but um, hang on, I want this dark green, this green to be a little darker. There we go. And then I'm going to pull it up this way and a little at the tip here, there. And then we're going to do this guy and we're going to obviously put the dark in wherever we don't have light. Makes it a lot easier to remember where your shadows are when you put the light on first and then come back and do this. And then we're just going to come up in here and add a little bit of shadow up in there too. And then feather it down real smoothly. Alrighty, I'm gonna move it up a little so you can see where, where I'm at. I'm gonna do this part here. I take the brush. I'm using a full load. It's all with my number 10. That's the other thing. Use the largest size brush you possibly can. Um, a 10. Even a 12, uh, I think a 12 might be a little big for this, but a 10 would be good because it will help you um, get smoother strokes. If you're using a tiny brush, that may be one of the reasons you get real choppy strokes. So keep that in mind. Okay, up here, this is all going to be dark. This is a full load. Oh, whoa, that's really a full load. Hang on. When that happens, wipe it off. Come back. Am 
I don't think I want it all the way across. I kind of liked it before it didn't come across like here. There. All righty, and let me just feather this to kind of make it look a little more natural. See here, I think there would be a little lightness because this goes, okay, let me turn around here. This part goes under, so let's get the shadow there. Then this part kind of comes out into the light, so I don't want a lot of shadow there. And then down at the base again, this part goes into the shadow. You can play. If you like this now, great. And, you know, if you don't like it, before you put it in the kiln, wipe it off and do what you do like. Oops, that's kind of dark, but not really. And then I'm going to bring the dark up this way. Oops. Am I in? Yeah, you can see. Just on this side. Because I kind of like it so there's a little bit of... Uh, I just don't want to go out of frame for you here. I kind of like it so there's a little bit of, there we go, a little bit of light on there. And then next time, if I don't want the light, you can always put the dark on, but you can never get the light back. Remember that. And then I'm just going to do this guy. Oh, a little dark there. You know, uh, I don't know if you've ever painted on a tinted plate before, but if you haven't, tinted plates are fabulous because the paint goes on so nice and smooth. I got a little paint over there. There we go. And I'm going to put a little dark on this side here, I think. Come on, it's not humoring me. There we go. And then I'm just gonna push the paint back here, push it back here, a little back here. I don't want it over the edge. You got a little over the edge there, a little over the edge there. You may have to just take a Q-tip, excuse me, and just kind of hit those areas even. Yeah, because otherwise, see what happened here? This is called bleeding. You see right there? Here, let me hold it up for you so you can see what I did wrong. Right here, it's called bleeding. I used turpentine. I didn't clean enough turpentine off my brush, and it uh, started to bleed into the background. We didn't want that. So how you take care of that is put some oil on your brush, and just go over it, and that will take care of it for you. Okay, so now, if you're me, what I normally do is walk away from it, come back in about 10 minutes and decide what it is I still wish I had a little more dark on, what it is I wish I still had a little more light on. There you go. I think that would help up there. And over on this side, I think I'd like a little line down the middle here. So I'm just going to put a little line down the middle there. Now, you don't have to do this. This is just personal preference. Uh, not getting it. It's not cooperating with me, but I don't want to put too much on because then I won't like it there. Okay. And a little pull here. All right. That's it. That's all I'm going to do on this, on this fire. Oh, one more place. Ha, <laughs> ha. You have to think of all the places they're going to be shadows. <clears throat> this is going to come up in here. There's going to be a shadow there. On the stem. Right there. And I'm going to put a little shadow at the bottom. And oops, I had some problem with bleed there. Okay. And then I'm just going to wipe it off nice and even. Okay. That's the first fire. We're going to work on this next week. And then that will be the final of this. Pick up those brushes, keep painting. See you next time, bye-bye. I hope you enjoyed the program and I hope you'll take a minute to subscribe so that other people can learn more about China painting and we can get the word out to more people. 
Uh, you also can look at the links below. Uh, my paintandporcelain.com website has a lot of freebies and printables for uh, new and experienced painters, as well as studies, supplies, and even some of my hand-painted china. So thank you again, and I'll see you next time.